So we're now going to take a look at how to use logarithms to solve exponential equations and also how to use exponential equations to solve logarithms. Before we do that, let's take a look at the processes of an exponential function and how that relates to the processes of the inverse function. So looking at this original function here, this exponential function, 3 to the x minus 1 plus 2, just looking at the processes that we go through, when we are putting in an input or what's happening to x is we first work with the exponent because there's x minus 1 so we subtract 1 from the x so we do the x minus 1 in the exponent and then from there the next step that we do order of operations is we actually do the 3 to the x minus 1 so we do that exponent there the 3 to the x minus 1 and then lastly we add 2. And so thinking of this function in terms of the graph, talking about domain and range and the transformations happening here. So this x minus 1 in the numerator is a shift to the right by 1 because it's happening on the inside with the input. So it's affecting the x's. So it's a horizontal shift right 1. And then this plus 2 on the outside, it's affecting the outputs. So that is a shift up by 2 because you're adding 2 to all the outputs. So the original domain the domain of all exponential functions is negative infinity to positive infinity. We can plug in any x value that we want and we will get an output value. And then for the range, normally for the exponentials, it's from 0 to infinity, not including the 0 because it has that horizontal asymptote. But since we're shifting up to, it's going to be from 2 to infinity with a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2. So let's just make a quick sketch for this graph. Say we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 2, which means that to the left or to the more negative values, the graph flattens out, and then it curves up and increases past that 0 point. So this is the function y equals 3 to the x minus 1 plus 2. And so now we have this line y equals x written here, the dotted line, the diagonal. And so the logarithmic function is just going to be reflection over this, but let's just see how we actually get the logarithmic function using inverses. We talked about it in terms of swapping x and y and doing that reflection. But to get inverse functions, what we do with the equations is we switch the x and the y, and then we solve for y. So let's switch the x and the y in this function here and see what we get. So we have x is equal to 3 to the y minus 1 plus 2. Now we have y in the exponent, so we want to solve for y. So this is where the logarithms come into play. However, before we can do any log rules or rolling the log or anything like that, we have to get the base to the exponent by itself. So we have to get 3 to the y minus 1 by itself before we can do any of the rolling or swapping of the logs. So to get the 3 to the y minus 1, so the base to the exponent by itself, we have to get rid of this 2. To get rid of the 2, you subtract the 2 on both sides. So that's 0. Subtract 2 from x. So this is just x minus 2 is equal to 3 to the y minus 1. And now this is where we can roll the log. We can turn this exponential equation into a logarithmic equation. So we have 3 as the base, and then the x minus 2 and the y minus 1 swap place. So what we have, and I like to write the log on the left-hand side, but it really works out the same. If we write it on the right-hand side, we can do that. So we have log base 3 on the right-hand side. And then you have the x minus 2 is now the input of the log, which is equal to the exponent. Remember, the logs always output the exponent. So the exponent is y minus 1. That is the value that is the output of the log on the other side of the equation. So we want to get y by itself. So we add 1 to both sides. And what we have left over is y is now by itself is equal to log base 3. 3 of x minus 2, and then that plus 1 on the outside. And so this is the inverse function of that original exponential function. And so this was a, a bit of a taste of solving for variables 
when we have the variable in the exponent. So we're solving for the y, and we had the y in the exponent. And so we had to use this rolling of the log. And this is one approach to solving logarithms. We will see other approaches very soon. So let's write out what the processes of this inverse function are. So just going through order of operations, we do the parentheses first, which is the x minus 2. And then we actually evaluate the log. So we're doing the log base 3 of the x minus 2. And then lastly, we add the 1. So again, just going back to inverses, we are taking the original processes, doing them backwards, and doing the opposite operations. So the last step on the original was to add 2. The first step on the inverse was to subtract 2. The second step, or the middle step, was to do the power, the exponent, 3 to the x minus 1. But now we're using the log instead of the exponent. So that's the inverse action there between doing an exponent and doing a log that is the inverse operation. And then lastly, we add 1, whereas the first step on the original was to subtract 1. So the inverse domain range and vertical asymptote, remember for inverse, domain and range swap. So the domain of the inverse is the range of the original. So this domain should be from 2 to infinity. And then this range of the inverse is the domain of the original. So this should be negative infinity to positive infinity. And logarithmic functions normally have a vertical asymptote at x equals 0. However, since this is a x minus 2 on the inside here, we're shifting to the right by 2. So that means instead of a vertical asymptote at x equals 0, that shifts right 2. So that's a vertical asymptote at x equals 2. So graphing this at x equals 2, say it's somewhere over here. This is the line x equals 2. And we're graphing this logarithmic function, which has this vertical asymptote goes down to negative infinity and sort of flattens out going that way. So this is just a rough sketch for the logarithmic function, which is that log base 3 of x minus 2 plus 1. So now let's take a look at actually solving for exponential equations. We did a little bit of solving exponential equations already through these notes. We solved exponential equations by matching the base. So if we had something like 3 to the x is equal to 81, we can see is there a common base between these two. We can't break down 3 anymore, so this is 3 to the x, but we can break down 81 as 3 to the 4th power. And so what we have is 3 to the x is equal to 3 to the 4. We have the same base, and both these left-hand side and right-hand sides are equal to each other, which means the exponents must be equal to each other. So we can just say x is equal to 4. That's one nice way of solving for exponentials or in other words, solving for the x value when it is in the exponent. And this works out when we have a common base, but here there is no nice common base. There's no nice number where you can write a common base between 3 and 10. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at logarithms to be able to solve an exponential equation like this where there's not a matching base that we can find. So the first one is the one that we've already seen before which is rolling the log. So we're going to roll the log here. We have 3 to the x is equal to 10. So 3 is the base and the x and the 10 swap place. So when we write the log it is log base 3 of 10 is equal to x. So the result or the output of the log is that exponent on the original. And now from here, we can just put this into our calculator. Log base 3 of 10 is equal to x. We already have x by itself, so there's no algebra, no solving for x that we have to do. So to calculate log base 3 of 10 in our calculators, we use the change of base formula, so it's log of 10 over log of 3. And that's equal to x. Let's put this into the calculator and see what we get. So in Desmos, the log button is all the way over in the functions tab right here, F-U-N-C, and the log is on the right-hand side here, and we hit log, go back to the main, of 10, close the parentheses, divided by, back to function, log of 3. And we get the output value, or log of 10 divided by log of 3, is about 2.8. 
1. And we can use logs as inverses, and this is a really nice method of solving. And so remember here, when we're looking at the original function with the base 3 to the x minus 1, so the base is 3, and the inverse log function is 3. Same thing with when we were working with the exponential with the base 2, the inverse log was base 2. So the base of the log and of the exponential, that's what the inverse function is. It's sort of like when you're doing a number to the third power, a number cubed, to undo that cube or undo that exponent of 3, you take the cube root or the third root. Or if a number is squared, you do the square root. So the root is that inverse value. And in particular, we're going to use this rule that we have here, which says log base b of b to the a is equal to a. So what that's saying is that if we have log base b, where the input of the log is the same base, we're just left with the exponent. And that's essentially what the inverse action, which is the log, does. So that rule, let's write this down real quick. We have log base b of b to the a is equal to a. And so to use that rule, we apply log base b to both sides. And the b here is 3. So we're applying log base 3 to both sides. So just like if we were going to take the square root of both sides, it's the same thing. So we just apply or we take log base 3 of both sides. So on the left hand side, we have log base 3 of 3 to the x is equal to log base 3 of 10. And now from here, we can use this rule, which says that if the bases match of the base of the log and the base of the exponential on the input of the log, then the output is just the exponent. So on the left hand side here, this is just x. And this is equal to well, we already evaluated log base 3 of 10. Remember, we used the change of base formula, or change of base rule. So this is log of 10 over log of 3. And we already found that this is approximately 2.1. So just to write out our steps on each of these problems or each of these processes, for the first one, this first step that we did here was we did rolling the log. So we'll just say roll the log. And then next, to actually evaluate what this logarithmic expression is, log base 3 of 10, we used the change of base. And then this last step was just the calculator. Similarly here, this first step that we did was using log base 3, we applied log base 3 to both sides. And then this next step that we did here was both change of base and the this rule of log base b of b to the a is equal to a, and then also change base. And then that last step is just put in the calculator, which we already did. So on this last one here, we can just apply the natural log or the common log to both sides and use some of the log rules to solve for x. So this is a really nice practice in using the log rules and doing some algebra with solving for x. So this one here, let's just apply the natural log to both sides. So if we apply the natural log to both sides, right, it's just like taking the square root of both sides, we can do that. So we just say the inputs of the natural log are the two values that we have on the left hand side and the right hand side. So this is the natural log of 3 to the x is equal to the natural log of 10. And we can just use rules of exponents, this x and the exponent can come out front. So then what we have here is x out front times the natural log of 3 is equal to the natural log of 10. And keep in mind the natural log of 3 and the natural log of 10, they're just numbers. I know there's a lot of symbols and letters floating around, but natural log of 3 is just something we can put in the calculator. It's just a number. So we have x times a number, which is the natural log of 3, so to get x by itself, we divide by that number, which is the natural log of 3. That divides to 1, divide by the natural log of 3 on the other side to make it equal. And you might see we have something very familiar or similar here, which is natural log of 10 over natural log of 3. And so we should end up getting x is approximately 2.1.
Let's just see how we do this in the calculator, the natural log, because it's different than the regular base log. In the calculator, to do the natural log, we go to the functions, and it's right next to the base regular log base 10. And so we use ln right here, natural log of 10, close the parenthesis, divided by natural log of 3, and we get the same thing. So that's why this change of base formula works. And this is just one example showing that the change of base formula works, where you get the same thing out each time. So the different steps that we did here, this first one was to apply the natural log on both sides. This next step here was to use the power rule, which means we can bring that exponent, that x out front, and then we divided by natural log of 3 to get x by itself. So on this next example, we have a little bit more operations happening here. So first we have two on the outside multiplying this base e to the power of 3x plus 2, and that's equal to 8. So just like previously, in order to use any of our rolling the log or applying the natural log or applying the inverse log, any of that log stuff, we have to first get the base to the exponent by itself. So to get the base to the exponent by itself, which is e to the 3x minus 2, we want to get e to the 3x minus 2 by itself. So we want to get rid of this 2 out front. So to get rid of the 2 out front, since 2 is multiplying to this base, we divide the 2. So we divide by 2, that cancels or divides out to 1, divided by 2 on the other side. And in fact, we're going to have to do this step on all of these. So on all of these, let's just divide by 2. It's the same starting equation, and it's the same starting step that we need to get the base to the exponent by itself. So now what we have is e to the 3x plus 2 is equal to 4, and we have that for all of these. e to the 3x plus 2 is equal to 4. And so this converting from the exponential to the logarithmic form, this is where we do that rolling of the log. But remember, we're going to have a base of e. So keep in mind that log base e of, doesn't matter, let's just say x, is equal to natural log of x. So it doesn't matter what that x is, but the natural log is log with base e. So when we are rolling the log, remember we have e is the base, so that it will be the base of the log, and the exponent and the result swap place. So we have log base e, which is the natural log, so we have natural log of, so the 4 is now the input of the log, because the 4 is the result of the exponent, and this is equal to the exponent is now the result or the output of the log, which is 3x plus 2. And now from here, we have x sort of on the ground level, and we can just do simple algebra, two-step algebra, to get x by itself. So we want to subtract 2, and we have the natural log of 4 minus 2 is equal to 3x, and then to get x by itself, we divide by 3, that divides to 1, divide by 3 on the other side, and so now we can just put in the natural log of 4 minus 2, all divided by 3, into the calculator. So let's check this in Desmos. So let's put the fraction in first. So we are doing function natural log of 4, close the parenthesis, minus 2, all divided by 3. And we get that the x value is about negative 0.205. And so just labeling each of these steps here, uh, we first got the base by itself. And then we next rolled the log. And then from there, we just solved for x using algebra. Now we're going to be using logs as inverses. So we apply the log base of the base of the exponential to both sides. So the base here is e, so we're going to apply the natural log because like we just wrote previously, log base e is the natural log. So we're going to apply the natural log to both sides. So what we have here is the natural log 
on both sides. Just like taking the square root of both sides, but we're taking the natural log of both sides. So we have here on the input is e to the 3x plus 2, and then 4 on the other one. And now we can use this rule that we were talking about before, where log base b of b to the a is equal to a. So essentially, we are matching the bases of the log and the base of the exponential on the input. So because we have natural log, which is base e, and the input is base e, then the output or the leftover is 3x plus 2. So we're doing this inverse operation. We're canceling out. It's like taking the square root of something squared. You're just left with the base, but we're now canceling the base instead of canceling the exponent. So the leftover part here is 3x plus 2, and this is equal to natural log of 4, and this might look familiar. We can now solve for x by subtracting 2 on both sides, and we have 3x is equal to natural log of 4 minus 2, and then we divide by 3 on both sides. And this is the exact same expression that we had on the first one, natural log of 4 minus 2, all divided by 3. So if you put that in the calculator again, you should get the same exact thing, negative 0 0.205. So this first step here, we applied natural log to both sides. This next step was we used that rule, that log base b of b to the a is equal to a. And then from there, it was just solve for x. So this last one here is where we just apply either the common log or the natural log. We use the common log or the natural log in this sort of process because the common log and the natural log are in our calculator. So we want to, and it's nice to use logs that are in the calculator. Now, it's probably going to be easier or just less work to use the natural log because we already did that and we have a base of e. So because we have the base of e, we can use the natural log because that's the inverse of base e is log base e, which is natural log. And so everything works out nicely with using it as the inverse. So because we already used the natural log as the inverse, let's use the common log or log base 10. So we're going to apply log base 10 to both sides. So we have log base 10 or we just log of the left hand side is equal to log of the right hand side, which is just four. And the left hand side is e to the three x plus two. So we're just applying the log base 10, the common log to both sides. And now from here, we use our log rules and we solve for x. So we have on the input of the log an exponent. So because we have an exponent here, we can bring this exponent out front using that power rule that we did previously. And remember, we're bringing out the entire 3x plus 2. So we have to make sure to keep this in parentheses, the quantity 3x plus 2 times log of e, which is equal to log of 4. So we want to get x by itself. We have 3x plus 2, that quantity, times log of e. And so log of e is just a number you can put in the calculator. But we want to get rid of this log of e on this left-hand side, so we divide by log of e. And then that will divide to 1, so we divide by log of e on the other side. And what we have left over is 3x plus 2 is equal to log of 4 over log of e. And then we want to get x by itself. So same, just two-step algebra. Let's do them at the same time. Subtract 2 and then divide by 3. And it's a little bit messy because we have sort of a fraction in a fraction, but we can just carefully put this into the Desmos calculator, and we should end up getting x is approximately negative 0 0.205. And so this process here, you can see it's a little bit messier than the other two processes. And in general, these first two are going to be the less messy or usually the quicker ways of solving for exponentials. And in general, there's not one way that's better or worse than the other. They both are usually fairly equivalent, either rolling the log or applying the inverse log. It usually just depends on 
what you want to do. So you kind of can choose your own adventure on these. So now let's go back to the problem that gave us a, well, problem, which is when we were trying to figure out how long it will take for our investment to triple if we start with $1,000 at 10% compounded continuously. So remember, compounded continuously, this wording means that we're using this formula, A equals P times E to the RT, where E is that number E, that 2.71 or so. And the other variables, the A is the end value or final value, however you want to say it. It's what you have at the end of the time. P is the initial value, what you're starting with. R is the growth rate. And T is the time. And so let's list out the variables that we have and figure out what we are trying to find. So we have A, P, R, and T. So reading through this, we're trying to see how long it would take for investment to triple. If we start with $1,000, start with $1,000, that means our P, our initial, is $1,000. At 10%, so 10% is the rate as a decimal, that's 0.1 or 0.10. And we are checking to see how long it would take for the investment to triple. So we know our end value, actually. We have to do a little bit of work to it. Our investment is going to triple, so we take the original and multiply it by 3. So the original or initial value times 3, because that's triple, is 3,000. So that's our ending value. And we're trying to find how long, so we're looking for time t. So put all these into the continuous compound formula, and we have 3,000, which is A, is equal to P, which is 1,000, times E to the RT, which is 0.1 times T. And now from here, we have a variable in the exponent, so we're going to have to use some of these methods that we just practice from above. But first, we need to get the base to the exponent by itself. We can't have any other multiplying, adding, subtracting, dividing. We can't have anything else before we use the log rules. We need to get the base to the exponent by itself. So we want to get rid of this 1,000. The 1,000 is multiplying to the base, so we need to undo that multiplication by dividing by 1,000. So divide by 1,000 on both sides. 3,000 divided by 1,000 is 3, and this is equal to e to the 0.1t. And from here, we can either roll the log, we can apply the natural log to both sides because that's the inverse log. So let's apply the natural log to both sides. So if we apply the natural log to both sides, so this is applying natural log on the left side is equal to applying the natural log on the right side. And so what we have is 3 is that input on the left, and the input on the right is e to the 0.1t. And now because we have natural log of e to the 0.1t, the natural log is base e, and on the input of that natural log with the base e, you have the exponent base e. So that means that the result of this right-hand side is just the exponent, which is 0.1t. So you have the natural log of 3 is equal to 0.1t. And then from here, get t by itself. Just divide by 0.1 on both sides. And when you put natural log of 3 divided by 0.1, you get t is approximately 10.986 years. So just about 11 years. So what we would say is that we would say it takes about 11 years for the investment to triple. So we just took a look at solving exponential equations where we have x or the variable in the exponent. But now we can go the other way. We can solve logarithmic equations, which mean we have x on the input or x as part of a logarithmic expression. So we have sort of two methods of solving these logarithmic expressions here. The first one is to, well, roll the log. Just like the first approach on solving the exponentials is rolling the log. We can do that here. So roll the log. You have 3 as the base and the x and the 2 swap place. So we have 3 to the second power because 2 is now the exponent and that is equal to x. So from here, all we have to do is just evaluate 3 squared and that's 9. So x is equal to 9. 
So this first step that we did here was roll the log. And the other step was just simplify or evaluate three squared. And now the other rule that we're going to use in the way that we apply inverses as logs is this rule here, which says b to the power of log base b of, let's say, u is equal to just u. So this is using like inverses. This is sort of the opposite as what we were doing. So previously, we we're talking about and describing exponentials and logs are inverse operations of each other. It's sort of like taking a square root of something squared. And then you just are left with the input. Here, it's the opposite. It's like you're squaring something that has a square root. So it's still inverse operations, no matter which way we look at it. So you can think of this as these two values are equal, kind of like when we were matching the bases, but we're going backwards. So we have like these two values are equal. These are the exponents. So we can put them in the exponent of anything. And we set the two base to the exponents equal to each other. And it's still a true equation. But it's more convenient if we use that base of three. So if we make log base three of x and two as the exponents of base three, we have an equation that says log base three of x in the exponent. So three to the log base three of x is equal to three squared. And again, since log base three of x is equal to two, that's what we're given. Then that means that if the bases are equal, then these two expressions, the left hand side and the right hand side must be equal. So this is still a true statement. No math rules are broken, totally legal approach to take. And now we're using this rule here, which says three to the log base three of x is just that x. So the three and the log base three sort of cancel each other out. And we're just left with x is equal to three squared, which is nine. So here we used this rule. And that's really the main step is just applying the base of three and then using this inverse idea. Now let's try both these approaches or methods with some added operations going on here. So we have log base five of two X minus one is equal to three. We roll the log. So we have base five and you swap the place of the two X minus one with the three. And so three is now in the exponent and this is equal to two X minus one. So we wanna solve for X. So we add one on both sides. 5 cubed is 125 plus 1 is 126 is equal to 2x. Now we want to get x by itself, divide by 2 on both sides. And so we have x is equal to 126 divided by 2, which is 63. So this first step that we did here was just roll the log. And then the rest of it is just solve for x, just algebra. Now let's use exponentials as inverses. So we know that if we have an exponential with base three, which is the same as the base of the log, then the base and the log cancel and you just end with the result of what's the input of the log. So let's do the same thing here where the base is five. So we have five to the log base five of two X minus one is equal to five cubed or five to the third power. And we're allowed to do this because if these two things are equal, the log base five of two X minus one is equal to three. Then if we use them as exponents with equal bases, then this expression here, the left-hand side and the right-hand side must also be equal. And so now we can think of five and log base five as canceling each other out. And we have two X minus one is equal to five cubed, which is 125. And now from here, it's 2x minus 1 is equal to 125. Get x by itself. Add 1 on both sides. And then divide by 2. So we have same thing. x is equal to 63. Now on this one here, we have some operations happening on the outside of the log. So just like before with the exponentials, we needed to get the base to the exponent by itself. Before we can do any of the logarithmic approaches, we need to get the log by itself. 
before we can do any of our rolling log or applying exponentials as inverses. So we need to get the log by itself. So nothing on the outside, which means we need to get rid of this one. So we add one to both sides. And in fact, we have to do that to both of these, add one to both sides. And so what we have here is log base five of two X is equal to three plus one is four. And so now the approach we're doing here is converting to the exponential form. So we're rolling the log. So we have base five and we're swapping the two X and the four. So what we have here is five is the base to the power of four is equal to two X. Now from here, you just divide by two to get X by itself. So you divide by two on the other side. So we're doing five to the fourth power is divided by two. And what you get is X is equal to 312.5. You can just put this into a calculator and that's what you get the value of X is. And so on the second one, after we add the one on both sides, we have the same thing left over log base five of two X is equal to four. And now we use exponentials as inverses. So we're saying that these two left-hand side and right-hand sides are kind of like the exponents and we're using five as the base. So this is five to the log base five of two X is equal to five to the fourth power. And so we have five as the base and then in the exponent we have log base five. So these two operations essentially cancel each other out. So what we have left over is just the inside of the log and the exponent, which is two X is equal to five to the fourth power, which is 625. And then get X by itself, divide by two, divide by two on the other side, and we have X is equal to 312.5. Now at this one, there's actually a little bit more going on. So same thing, we need to get just one single log on one side of the equation so that we can use the exponential conversion or use exponentials as inverses. But in order to do that, we need to get one single log together. So here we have log of X plus log of three X minus 13. So going back to our log rules, whenever we have log of something plus log of something else, so we're adding two logs together, we can combine the two logs into one by multiplying the inputs. So we have here log of X times three X minus 13. And this is equal to one. So this step right here is the product rule. That's the log rule that we're using here. It's the product rule. And now from here, we can roll the log. So notice that there's no base written here. However, if there's no base written, always assume or that means that the base is 10. That's the common log. So you have base 10 here and we're swapping the input of the log with the results of the log. So the result, which is one, becomes the exponent. So we have base 10 still. The power of one is equal to, what we have here is x times 3x minus 13. So this is actually 3x squared minus 13x. And now this might look familiar here. We have First off, no more logs, no more exponentials. We have X as the bases. And what we see is that we have X squared and just X to the one. So this is actually a quadratic expression. So we wanna get everything to one side of the equation and just get zero on the other side. So subtract 10 over here, cause 10 to the one is just 10. And so we have zero is equal to three X squared minus 13 X minus 10. And now this is going back to all the quadratics. We want to solve for essentially the zeros of the quadratic because we have the quadratic is equal to zero. So we're solving the zeros. We can either factor or if we have trouble with factoring, we can use the quadratic formula to get those solutions. So let's work with factoring here. So normally with factoring, we have not had this a, the leading coefficient to be something other than one. So when it is something other than one, one approach that you can take is something called the AC method. And with the AC method, it's called that because we're multiplying A times C. And so we do this when A is not equal to one. We, I mean, we could do it when A is equal to one and it still should work, but it's more useful when A is not equal to one. 
So it's called the AC method because we're doing A times C. So remember in this quadratic, three is A, negative 13 is B, and negative 10 is C. And so we're multiplying three times C, which is negative 10, and we get negative 30. And so from here, it's just the same thing. We look at what two factors will multiply to negative 30 that add to negative 13. So different factors of 30 or negative 30 are 10 and 3, 15 and 2, and we need only one of them to be negative. So the correct approach here, and this may take some trial and error when you're trying to think through it, is negative 15 and 2. Negative 15 times 2 is negative 30. Negative 15 plus 2 is negative 13. So we have negative 15 plus 2 is equal to negative 13. So this is good. This is what we want. These are the two factors we're going to use. So what we do here is we just rewrite the expression everything the same. The only thing that's changing is the negative 13x. So rewrite the 3x squared. And then we're rewriting negative 13x using the negative 15 and the 2. So this is minus 15x plus 2x minus 10. That stays the same. So we're just breaking up or separating this negative 13x. And so now that we have four terms, we can use factoring by grouping. So with factoring by grouping, we group together the first two terms and the last two terms. And we look inside and say, what's the greatest common factor out of each of these terms? And we factor out the greatest common factor. So in the first group, the greatest common factor is 3x. So we pull out a 3x, and what's left over, if you take out 3x from 3x squared, it's just an x. If you take out 3x from negative 15x, you're just left with negative 5. And then the greatest common factor in the first group is 2. And so we pull a 2 out from the first group, so we have plus 2. And we have what's left over is x minus 5. And so this is good. We have the leftovers is x minus 5. And so we look at these are two terms, 3x times the x minus 5, that's one term, 2 times the x minus 5, that's another term. And so in these two terms, they have a greatest common factor of x minus 5. So they both have x minus 5 in it, which means that we can factor out x minus 5. So let's factor out x minus 5. So we pull the x minus 5 out front, that's the greatest common factor, and we're left with, from the first term, 3x, and from the second term, plus 2. And so this is the fully factored form of this original quadratic that we started with. And the reason why we factor it is because we have it equal to 0, and we can use that zero product rule, where we set each of these factors equal to 0. So we have x minus 5 is equal to 0, and 3x plus 2 is equal to 0. So to solve for x, you add 5, and you have x is equal to 5. That's one solution. And then on the other one, to solve for x, you subtract 2 on both sides, and then you also divide by 3. So what we have as the result or the solution here is x is equal to negative 2 over 3. Now with these solutions, and something that we should have actually been looking at, is we need to check if the solutions work for the logarithmic function. So remember that the logarithmic function has some restrictions on its domain. In particular, if you look back at what the logarithmic function looks like, the restriction on the domain is that the inputs of a log have to be greater than zero. You can't take the log of anything less than or equal to zero. So up at the top here, let's go through and look at all of our solutions and see if they all work. So first, let's make a note that log inputs must be greater than zero. So they can't be less than or equal to zero. So with this first one, there's no issues here because you have nine as the solution. If you were to plug nine back into the function, you're not taking the log of a negative number or zero. On this one, there is some operations happening on the inside of the log. So we might have to check. So to check to see if this log has any extraneous solutions, or in particular to see if this solution works, we check 
x equals 63 by plugging in 63. So what we need is the input of the log to be greater than zero. So we need 2x minus 1 to be greater than zero. So we plug in the 63. So we have 2 times 63 minus 1, which is equal to, and put this in the calculator, 125, which, yes, this is greater than zero. So that's good. 63 is a legitimate solution. Now for this one, we can also just check to see this. If you plug in 312.5 into the original, you just multiply 312.5, which is 625, and that gives you a positive value. So this one is good as well. Now for these ones, if you look, when you plug in 5, that doesn't break any rules. We're not taking the log of anything negative or 0, so that's good. However, if you were to plug in negative 2 thirds into either of these, into the original, just log of x, and in fact, if one solution doesn't work for one of these logs, then it doesn't work for the entire thing. It can't be a solution. Even if it works for one and not the other, if it does not work for one, then it does not work for the entire equation. So negative two thirds, if we plug that into the first one, that's a negative number. That's not a solution. We cannot plug in negative two thirds because there's a restriction on the domain or on the inputs of logs. Just like we can't take the square root of negative numbers, we can't take the log of zero or less than zero. So let's write a side note here and say that this is not a solution because can't have negatives as inputs of logs.